what's his name? Schwartz, Schwartz, uh, what's the former CEO, of the Sun CEO? What's his name? Schwartz, 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 what the hell's his name? I can't remember, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, Why do I always forget? So I, I, I suck at, like, uh, yeah, Jonathan Schwartz. I like his testimony. I agree with him. I, I really don't want to discuss much of this because it's such, I think that... Well, the, the, th the main thing I wanted to get into, because the stupid case has been discussed today, for those of you who are wondering, we're talking about the stupid, you know, case here. Versus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the thing I find interesting is the instructions from the judge, and then the ramifications of after the fact. That he's, the judge has basically given the jury the instructions, we don't know yet if APIs are copyrightable, but for the purpose of your deliberations, assume they are and make your decision accordingly. That's and wrong. What it is is that, what, what, what should have been instructed is that, can you grandfather in open source code that now, can, in other words, by grandfathering I mean, can you retro in something that was open source into proprietary source code. I, and I, why, I, I agree fully, and that's why, I, that, that's why I brought this up. The way this has been handled is the judges told them, assume APIs are copyrightable, make your decision accordingly, and the judge will only make a decision regarding whether that's true, whether you can grandfather open source and retroactively change licensing, and all of the hubbub that's at the core of this case if the jury awards damages based on evidence yes. presented making these assumptions. The, I think the judge is honestly hoping that Oracle's case was so flimsy that the jury isn't going to award damages and the judge doesn't have to make a ruling. I think that's what the judge is hoping. <laughs> I hope so because you know, I, and I don't care what the uh, president said, you know, McNeely, even though he, he was trying to undo uh, Schwartz's testimony. You know, he's best buds with, with uh, uh, Ellison, you know, from Oracle. And the thing of it is, is that Ellison, I like him because he's in my favorite sport, which is America's Cup in Sailing, and he sponsors our United States team, but I was so damn disappointed. Oh, this Oracle is already a huge, huge company, and there's so many inroads into, into things that are never going to really go away. We're always going to need databases. There is no such thing as an iPad or Apple coming anywhere freaking near the amount of computing and architecture and middle layers and back-end layers that Oracle provides out there for, you know, for super in, um, enterprise computing. And, and to me, this is nothing more than Oracle saying, looking at Microsoft making free money and they just want to make free money. Yeah. And McNeely is damn good friends with Larry Allison, and hey, maybe they can just both benefit. And he'll make, uh, those of you that are America's Cup fans, when they had, they didn't use the trimarans or catamarans, that McNeely could be the 17th man on the crew. Let's we'll see if anybody actually understands what, that, what I mean by that. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what happens. I, it, it, 50-50 on what the jury takes given those bad instructions and that yeah it, it, I, I, I think it's grounds for an appeal regardless of what the actual uh, it's crazy I, cannot, I, I honestly Rusty cannot believe this is happening like, Google took it when it was completely open source they wanted everybody in the Java tent uh, they it, it was just it's insane to me utterly insane you cannot grandfather. Can you imagine? What if somebody acquires something else? Let's just say that they take. Uh, no, no. Basically, this is the right. death sentence. If, if if this flies, this is the death sentence to the computer industry in general because you will be afraid to ever touch anything anybody else made, regardless of whether it's open, closed source license, because someday, 5, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, company A may be bought by company B, and then company B will retroactively rewrite the licenses and say, you owe them a trillion dollars. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, man, if this, this, you know, this sets a precedent, man, they're going to turn me into a starving. <laughs> we wondered what it would take. <laughs> because while, you know, I've advocated intellectual property, this is outrageous. 
I think this is a this is an abuse. Yeah. Honestly, Oracle did not understand what they were doing when they bought Sun, and they are desperately trying to cram force and reverse that into something that's different than what they actually bought. Yeah, I, I'm really sad that now Oracle is my SQL and job. I, I, I want someone else to just take it from them. It's just, I'm just really upset about this. If they try and do this, they, they tried to do this with OpenOffice, they created LibreOffice. They're trying to do this uh, now with. They gave away OpenOffice. Well, because they realized there just was no way to get signed. Well, no, I, you know, I never followed up on this. What happened to Solaris? I don't actually know on that. I know Oracle is using Spark chips because that's all I see. You know, I get I get Oracle newsletters and all that, and, and see all the bragging rights. You know, Spark is a phenomenal chip. I've done a YouTube video on it, and I know they're not giving that up. So. No, but well, that's the thing. Like you said, they have plenty of things. They don't need to do this. I miss the Sundays. You know, I'm getting depressed. I really miss the Sun Microsystem days. God damn it. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, uh, well, this is I will say this, though, real fast. Go ahead. It was, good, it, it was good that Oracle gave away OpenOffice because, yeah, even though uh, LibreOffice may end up eating it up, it's good for LibreOffice because Oracle could come on up and just sue the living crap out of LibreOffice. And you, you know what? Honestly, given what they're doing with Java here, I'm... I'm really glad they did that because if they hadn't just released, although granted, if this sets the legal precedent it is, they can renege on that too and still try and destroy Open Office and LibreOffice. Not anymore. They gave it away now to an open source. Uh, it, yeah. Okay, but look. It's at, no longer Oracle's uh, property. They no longer own it. Okay, but let's hope so, they can't renege on that. <laughs> no, no, no. There's no way. They it. gave it away because they knew they had a mess on their hands and they didn't want to deal with it. Yeah. I, I, I kind of would like to see the open office name be preserved because it just has such a mind share. You know, but there's its interface, uh, if Oracle owned it with the interface, they would have ended up suing LibreOffice because, you know, they had the same interface. Yeah, I know. Well, it was and a fork. They, they said, no, we're not going to let you fuck it up. We're going uh, to go do our own thing. It's open source. We can fork it. It's... <laughs> Okay, um, Captain Economics, uh -huh. since you're already a little depressed, if you will go into our next story, which is yeah, entitled uh, Rim and Four Other Big Firms in Big Trouble. And this you makes. Know what, this, you know what? I actually thought that wake up thing was some freaking Occupy Wall Street thing when it first happened. But uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's Rim Australia. Let's be very freaking clear. This is yeah. not like. Canada Rim or you? This is well, and, and I figured that's why I'm letting you. Australia, and you know what? Whatever. I, I I guarantee you, if Apple put something off like this in some other freaking country or whatever, you know, it would be seen as a pretty cool, neat little way of advertising. Okay, whatever. Uh, and then you could say, oh, I will never do that. Whatever, you know. And the thing of it is, is that they did it. It is. A, I don't even. My problem is, is that the execution is fine, but what the hell does wake up mean? So I guess the message is a little off. Uh, had they conveyed maybe a better message than wake up, it would have probably come off better. But I mean, really, people are in the street and they see wake up and they're going like, for what? You know, what are we, what, what, what's the, and they, 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 you know, because that's what I would have been. I think it's great. You mobilize a whole bunch of people. It's effective, but what the hell? I mean, wake up, and then I go to your website, and it's accounting down to what? I mean, this is, you know... The uh, end of the world as we know it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would have put a little bit more in that message. That's just me. Uh, that's fine. I, it's just, wow. Uh, I would be out there, and if I were out there, they're like, what do you... What? I, I, I wouldn't even know what they're talking about. It's like I'm saying. I go up to him and say, well, wake up from what? What do you want me to wake up to? You know, I'm interested. Uh, uh, okay, so you're talking know. about the picture. Moving down to the actual article. Basically, this is making some assumptions. I'm not sure match properly. They're basically making the assumption that in today's market, uh, companies cannot allow themselves to get too far behind anyone else. If that was the right. case, we should have written off Microsoft not 2 or 3. Yeah, not true. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it's, 
I know you like Rim, and they bring up the fact that Apple came back from complete bankruptcy. They're like, but that was that was <laughs> ten years ago. You know, you can't do that today. Things move too fast. <laughs> Lots of companies have come back from the brink, even outside of tech. Okay, I mean, Motorola has been up and down twice, as I recall. Yeah, but they're not. Oh, Motorola Mobile uh, is going somewhere, but the Motorola itself, yeah. that's gone. Uh, and, and you know what's interesting is that I can't figure out why Apple stock is still going down. I'm puzzled by this. Um, now. Rim stock went up to above 14 bucks the other day, and I have no idea why. No freaking clue. To me, I can look at it and I have a bias, and I can look at you as an investor and tell you, well, all right, well, Rim is still, they're not negative, they're already dead, they're spending internationally, but all of a sudden there's a surge above, you know, $14, now they go back to their average, it's about 13 five. But, okay, so, you know, one asks, Okay, well, the day that they're talking about BlackBerry 10, which we'll get in later in the show, which I think is just fucking kick ass. But the, 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 uh, it, it's weird, and I don't understand why Apple is like in the 500s. And, um, it, there are good, there are damn good arguments that, as an investor in saying, well, you don't want the king of the crop anymore. You want to find the guys that are in the garage that have a lot more growth to go. That is a very valid investor, aren't you? Yeah, the question is, how do you find them before the b b before everybody else does? Because that's the most risky area to invest in, also. Right, and, and, and I would, and, and there is an argument that Rim was brought back down to make it cheaper to buy, and that does go on a lot. If if people, if, if investors and analysts were, uh, as, there's the difference between analysts and strategists were interested in BlackBerry 10 and impressed by it, then they will force the stock cheaper to buy it cheaper, of course, too, because it is at a low, right? Uh, versus, I think it was, what was its high? Or like 100 or something, 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 I don't know what it was. But they, they, they were, you, you drive it down cheaper in order to, to you know, take in a larger profit in the end because you believe it will grow up. So there's that. Um, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. And, and, and I, I'll go a little side segue politically. Most of the stock market is very high in its total indice because of our market. We have so much freaking cheap money, right? The place that banks are, and investment banks are putting it into the stock market because they still don't trust the economy. So we have an overinflated stock market to begin with. But well, I mean, we'll, we'll I mean, see what happens with that bubble over the next yeah, few years. Right after 110.2 billion at this point. You got to Apple. That means that they can pay another set of dividends out, which I still don't get. Why well, is it the five hundred right now? They, basically, they already said how much dividend they they, they, they they push out, right? And then they already said how much they put off strategic reserve or whatever would be get spent for blah blah blah. And they go in and double their damn profits again. I mean, with phenomenal numbers, nobody can deny that. And now have around 110.2 billion. Don't give any dividends out yet. Well, that that I think that's the reason their stock is where it is because they haven't actually paid those out yet. So, oh well, but all right. So you're saying when they pay them, then they're going to spend. But that would be kind of I don't know. I'm just I'm a little perplexed over right now. Uh, people <laughs> are speculating. I I think people are over speculating what paying those out is going to do to their stock. And their value. They're, they're, they're thinking it's going to destroy the things you're talking about, and, and that isn't what's going to happen, but the speculation is. Yes, this was wanting to pay off. It's just like, look at, look at ExxonMobil. They just paid one of the largest dividends out. I mean, the, the, the thing, you, 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 you don't have to, let me just be clear. I'm an economist. I am, I am not into finance. It, 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 so, economics... It's a very mathematical science. So, as an economist, let's yeah, get back to the article. Is, the gift of finance is the predictive nature uh, that, or not. that you, you play <laughs> in the stuff and things like that. Economics always wins long term. Finances are usually very, you know, it, it's extremely erratic. That's why you have people that make money totally on on day-to-day on -day scraping, what we call, you know, scraping the stocks or scraping. 
whether you trade currency or whatever, you're just scraping the, the ups and downs, the deltas. Uh, the economics, the, the long term always, the, the math always pans out. But uh, it, it's hard because, you know, I never took finance. I, you know, I'm in economics and. Uh, okay, and that's a bit. The economics is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this article, not the boomerangs of the two stocks, which okay. is so. Okay, and what this article is suggesting is that when a company starts to fall behind, from economics 101 perspective, that they should start immediately getting rid of all their dead weight. They should go fire, uh, you know, fire a bunch of employees, shut down all the non-productive divisions. Yada and so forth. Change their leadership, uh, and immediately introduce a new product because a new product is what is important. Wrong. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and, and the reason why that's wrong is because that's not Rim. Rim has no debt. They have tons of cash in the bank. Th this is not Paul. This is not a company that is 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 or has been bought and been bought again and then already on a negative equity scale. Rim is making money, guys. You may not think that they're all cool and all this other stuff because you're caught up in the Angry Birds and Facebook and all your other bullshit. But think of this: they are making money elsewhere. Like Apple just made a shitload of money in China. Uh, Rim, it, like I said, is not negative. Has plenty of cash in the bank. Uh, what's the fuck you worry about? Why do they need to fire anybody? Well, well, I mean, the people that left are because they're they are shedding older technologies. Their BES is no longer, like we discussed in the show, going to be really the forefront. Global fusion is, and now that it looks like they are going to abandon the hard keyboard, but I will I will say what I am impressed with their virtual version of the keyboard. I find very very intriguing. I will hold my opinion until actual use. But uh, the, the, they are, seem to be moving on. And they still have plenty of cash in the bank. And OS, uh, OS7 is continually expanding internationally. So, uh, you know, I think I think this guy needs to just wake up and maybe get off the drugs that he's taking. <laughs> and actually, and actually or the girl, whoever wrote this, and, and actually look at facts. Uh, it's the same thing with Apple. When people bash Apple or anybody here, I don't. I hate sound bites. I hate it. Complete. When I make a sound bite, I'm trying to incite humor. Okay, but you will never find me write a goddamn article on bullshit. That's just a, a totally different thing to me. That's why, you, you, like on my own YouTube channel, I'm very careful about what I post on my own uh, on my own YouTube channel. There's a very big difference between what I consider having fun, like when we were when I was, you know. Cussing out Android and all that shit. Remember, remember that with, with Bob and all that. I was having fun, trying to incite humor and all this other shit, right? With the, with the <laughs> and, 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 but this is a very freaking different thing. Writing a goddamn article, coming out, and, and not even having your facts straight. So that that's my problem with this article. Well, and, and that, that's why I threw this in because it's like it, it. There's a number of people, and this is what you were talking about. You know, uh, people just getting fired because they're not following the latest Fed instead of doing what their company does well, and and so on and so forth. If the industry lets themselves get caught up in this, oh my God, I'm not in charge of the pack. We're moving at the speed of the 21st century. We're going to go bankrupt, even though we have cash in the bank and people are buying our products. We have to destroy and change everything. Well, that's the easiest way to destroy a company I can think of. <laughs> and that's what's happening to Nintendo. Uh, yeah. But Nintendo has lots of cash in the bank, right? Not anymore. No. No? Because no, they no, did no, no. this no, no, crap. No, 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 what happened is, is that uh, when they introduced the Wii U, they said, you're too late. You, you're not doing what the other companies are doing, so you're, all, you're gone, and Sony's gone. It's just going to be Microsoft now. Wait a minute, you're telling me Nintendo's going to go away? What? Yeah. The Wii is so popular though, right? Not anymore. No? It's all Xbox now. Oh, Xbox, the PS3. Well, what happened to the Red Ring of Death and all that shit? The uh, people were like, no, 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 we got to go with the trends. Well, I'm not That's much of a gaming, but how? But see, because gaming is a whole different demographic. 
Xbox is that pretty a fad, a fad, Because a fad usually has no sustenance behind it. You it's just the, uh, it's because water. I want to be cool. But gamers are geeks mostly. And geeks have intelligence. Especially to what they're using. They well, get no. fast and shit, right? You know what they turned the Xbox into? You know what they put on there? Uh, what, what was it called? That thing that nobody likes over uh, Windows 8? The tablets? Oh, you mean Metro? Yep, they put Metro in there, and now it runs Angry Birds and all that other internet shit. Yep. So you now... play Angry Birds on a console. Yep. Yeah. How does that work with a joystick or whatever? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Just, uh, I, just, I, you know, I feel like I'm on a gun. Welcome to the future, bit where all our brains implode. <laughs> no, no, no. no. They're mad at See, they're mad at the Wii didn't have like the internet capabilities that the Xbox 360 and the PS3 had. Before I entertain this, I want some numbers, but I really want to know what Nintendo's numbers are. I'm gonna have to go check it. I mean, because they you know what? Three hundred million. Man, we need to get some, you know, side sources out. I just, I'm perplexed. Consoles are ruled by people that I would can really consider geeks and, and know what the hell are. Now, now it's like, you gotta have, uh, you gotta have Wait, online chat, cross game chat, you gotta be able to what you're telling me is that matchmaking, okay, what? and achievements, you gotta Match? have all that. You're telling me like eHarmony and adult, no, like, no, 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 like friendship. friendship it's like when you go into from... a game and then you uh, say you want to have a friend in there and it'll match you up with uh, other people. What? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're going to say that Xbox will eventually even kick the iPad's ass? Since, since, since it, it has Angry Birds and all this It stuff? finds other people with the same skill level as yours. Okay, so, uh, um, so this, you're telling me like what I love now with the Democrats, you know, now, uh, Democrats are the only people that I know that make all these subgroups, so I will use their own little their own little political group that they now call Walmart. Mom. He doesn't want to have a political conversation. Well, anyway, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Matchmaking is that you go into Call of Duty. I, I had to give you context on why I'm using the words Walmart moms. So you're telling me this or this that Walmart moms are now interested in buying Xbox 360? Yeah. But it was also added with the Connect. Because the Connect took up all the casual gamers now, even though. Except for oh. Bit's four year old son. I mean, Connect right. Connect Star Wars. Connect Star Wars is being looked at as Atari's Pac Man version 2. If anybody knows what that means. Uh, unfortunately. And, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, dear and Lord. And the uh, Atari 2600 Pac Man that came out all the way back in the 70s was a horrible piece of shit, but everybody bought it. Loves and they loved it. They said it was the greatest game of all. Tells you real life. You know, in this entire two weeks, my wife has been away. My my eight year old has not even touched the Wii or the Kindle Fire. Better get him an Xbox. They're gonna be an outcast. They're saying like that. If you want to be in the gaming business, you got to put all your things in apps and put it download to Xbox only. Go direct X like everyone else. If you want to do open to you, get the fuck out the door. You're you're fired. Wow. Excuse me. That's well, right. I mean, the, to me, to me the, I'm, I'm a little intrigued by all this. But it's Thank basically you. like this. You want to program for open to you, you're fired. You want to, you want to have it do it for a multiple consoles, you're How fired. How the hell is the X going to run it on? That's, a, that's what it means. Direct X based. But it does, doesn't it? Because the Xbox 360 is risk. The Xbox, yeah. Yeah. I never knew, I mean, I never thought, basic. About, it, you know, I thought about it. I'm just now rethinking about it again. So, the I Xbox guess there's, I doubt that this is the most important device. The Xbox uh, 360 has basically been turned into a mobile device now. And they're just downloading all that shit. And it's like, if you live in a royal area, sorry, no games for you. Do you live in an area where you can't dial up? Fuck out. You're not our customers. I guess you, you want something for your right. best customer? Well, either move into a different has a sound or, uh, or just take a gun and shoot yourself. You can take your only two options. 
Yes, Microsoft. Nothing to worry about. No, there was That's no other room. I can't shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> you tell Kyle to stop talking in the background and put his ass up here. <laughs> <laughs> you put order. Get over here. <laughs> I said my gun's in the other room. I can't shoot myself. <laughs> There's no freedom in right now in video games. What's the thing that says Z? Did you know about this Nintendo demise? And robot moms now on Xbox 360. I don't know, dude. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't even have a console. So. Yeah, he's been play. He was playing a PlayStation the other day. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't hooked up to the internet, so I couldn't even mess with that stuff. Well, Sony's going to go away not because of the PlayStation, it's because their television. Samsung's kicking their ass. Yeah, Samsung makes damn yeah. TV. You know what? That would be interesting, actually, if Samsung and Google got together and made a console. I'm uh, done with Google. I'm freaking done with Google. But also, what happened? It's not I just the... Uh, high rate on Twitter, It's not just the TV. It's just that... You remember that PS Vita that Sony brought out? Yeah. Fucking okay. flop. Only two million in the last, like, uh, uh, year and a half. That's sad. Only two million in, in what, like, what? A half, a half of two years. Right. And that's, like... You gotta be kidding me, dude. Seriously? Yeah, it's so Stop funny. fucking producing that damn thing. Nobody's buying it. Okay, and on that depressing note of Microsoft taking over the console well, industry. I was just also gonna say that Nintendo stocks are going down even though their sales are going up, but they're still dropping like a rock. The Apple sales are going up and their freaking shit is going down too. Yes, yes. The more you sell, the lower your stock. And on that depressing note, I'm going to put a quick pause in the video. <laughs>